What is going on? This is an interesting vlog we got going on right now. Uh, what happened behind me just now, which is not about the vlog, uh, this is van life problems. My olive oil that I have, my cooking oil, uh, actually tipped over and broke or spilled or the cap loosened up and I just spent the last half hour cleaning it all up. Van life problems. Make sure you secure things down while you're driving. Uh, I thought it wasn't a good place. It tipped over and must have broken. I didn't even look at the bottom. Oh well, it was almost a full bottle of olive oil which went down into my countertops and everywhere else. Oh well, this is what you gotta do. That's not what this vlog is about though. What this vlog is about is service on your Mercedes Sprinter because what a lot of people don't realize with Sprinters. Let's get into all of that right now. So I got the van behind me right now. I am getting it serviced right now for the first time. I only got 10,000 miles on it. I am at AG Automotive. They are diesel specialists here in Portland, Oregon. A couple reasons why I'm here. Number one, they were uh, referred to me by my buddy Troy from Van Life Tech. Also, my friend Alexa's van, her van uh, was being serviced here. Uh, she had some issues with uh, the battery and alternator and it was dying. They didn't know what was wrong with it or excuse me, she didn't know what was wrong with it. Friends didn't know what was wrong with it, but guess what? They diagnosed the issue within like an hour or two and it's getting serviced here. My van, I talked to them that day. It turns out Mercedes will tell you, you do not need to get an oil change until you hit the 20,000 mile mark. And I am here to tell you that that is pretty much, it's not incorrect, <laughs> But we're gonna get into all that when we actually meet with some of the technicians here at AG Automotive. And they're gonna explain it a little bit better in detail than I can because, let's face it, they're pros and I'm not. So let's get into all of that and I'm gonna show you what is what. I just got my van back from AG Automotive. I'm here with Andrew right now. What's up, dude? Hey. How are you, man? Not too bad, how about you? Dude, he just showed me uh, three of the oils that came out of my van. Out of my van. Yep. So before, you guys put a cleaner in there, yep. and then the new oil. I'll throw up a picture of it right now. I was taking with my phone, right? Yeah. Um, you do that for a specific reason. Why do you do it? Help get all of the soot and uh, contaminants that build up in the oil over an extended period of time. So you yeah. don't have to do it every oil change. You can do it every other, yeah. depending on your driving habits. And it's just like an oil cleaner, I right. guess. Right, yep, like a soap for the inside of your engine. And the reason you do that is you explained it to me really well inside is because uh, sometimes like other companies yeah. will do oil changes and then it's like, you know, you get all that black bad oil out and then you put the new oil in, it's supposed to be clean, but if you drain a little bit, it is black still because it's still, it's still in there. Yeah, so the soot will actually stick to the cylinder walls and in your crankcase system and it won't all drain out. So that soap uh, cleaner helps get it in suspension to help drain it out when you do the initial drain. To remove all that stuff. And the reason I'm actually here today getting my oil changed is because I was, uh, my friend's van, Alexa's getting serviced, and I was talking to your tech, and I was like, hey, how true is it for the 20,000 mile oil change? It still seems weird to me that Mercedes can wait 20,000 miles to get an oil change. And you and everybody else here, and my other friends that don't even work here, were saying, do not wait the 20,000. Correct. Do it every maybe five, six, somewhere around there, a thousand miles. You guys have actually seen some fragments. Yeah, so we've seen metal fragments from extended oil change intervals. Um, we've also seen that carbon will build up in the engine and then start affecting your diesel particulate filter and your EGR system with all that soot build up from the extended or longer oil change intervals. A whole bunch of stuff that I have no idea what he just said, but I'm not willing to wait to the 80, 100,000 mile mark to realize I need to spend 10 grand to fix my damn van. Correct. And yeah. that's really what my point is. Yep, so that's what we're trying to avoid. Service it, keep it clean, it'll last a lot longer. Guys, we work out at the gyms to make sure our bodies are that way. Treat your cars and your vans. You guys don't only just do obviously sprinter vans, you do all types of vehicles and you're diesel specialists. Correct. Yeah, so you do all, everything. Yep. You even have a really cool truck I want to show here in a minute yeah. that you're working on. I'm not going to say the amount you guys are putting into it right now, but what kind of what kind of truck is it? It's a 2004 Ford 6 liter, so it's F350 or 450. Yeah. 
And, uh, and we're doing a cylinder head job. Cylinder head. Yep. That's not cheap if you guys know anything about mechanical stuff whatsoever. Parked right next to my friend Alexa's van. So her van's getting fixed. You guys diagnosed that actually really quickly. Yeah. Um, you guys, I, her and I were both worried that it was going to be a, a laundry list of stuff being fixed, but it turns out you were very honest and you guys told her what it was. You even gave her a couple lists of other things that could be wrong and or the other things that she should repair. And you guys are just taking care of the one issue that is really getting her back on the road. Yeah, for sure. And that's what we try to do is to get the diagnostic results as accurate and as quickly as possible to give the best repair for the vehicle and for the customer. And they give you got like they gave me an email and with pictures and they gave me a printout of all this stuff too. Guys, AG Automotive in Portland, Oregon, hopefully gonna be branching out sooner. Yeah. Sure. Hopefully sooner to other parts of Oregon, possibly uh, Vancouver, Washington, and hopefully going down south. We're going to go to California, maybe. Oh, Come on, maybe. Yeah, let's go, man. Let's there go. We go. Well, you want to walk over there? Yeah, we're going to show, show the garage a little bit. So this oh. is a shop. This is a shop, guys. Check all this out. These guys are working hard. I don't even know who these two are, but they're working their butts off. Actually, these are all diesels. We got a Honda van in here and Alexa's van. Alexa's van. Hey, Alexa. <laughs> oh man, and I don't ever seen this, this off. Is it. This thing's a beast. What the hell are you guys doing? Basically came in here, losing coolant, um, diagnosed it, found that the cylinder head gaskets were leaking. How many times have you guys been inside of a shop with a vlogger? <laughs> this is a head gasket, this is the culprit. That's why the cab had to come off in order to access the cylinder heads. Dude, that thing is insane. How many miles are on this thing, do you know? Do you remember? 150, 150,000, not that many, not that many for having to do all this. You know, obviously this doesn't phase you one bit. You are very familiar with this. Oh, no, I've done quite a few of them, quite a few of these jobs. Guys, this stuff scares the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> like looking at this, I have no idea what the heck I'm looking at, but this is why I pay money for people like this guy right here and the rest of his crew uh, to take care of this kind of stuff. Uh, lastly, I do want to say this is a family run business. Yes, You know, it so is. they're very, I love family run businesses because I feel like you guys treat each one of your customers like a part of your family. Yes, um, that is one of our cores here at AG is treat our customers like a family. There you go, you come from a big family. Yeah. So that's a big part of everything. And I'm really glad that Troy from Van Life Tech, he's the one that actually referred me to you guys and really got me in touch with you. So I'm really happy with that. They're making it really hard for me to leave Portland. I'm gonna be <laughs> honest. I might stay here a while yeah. because they're making it really hard for me to leave. Uh, you can check them out on Instagram at AG Auto Repair, all one word. I'll put all that stuff up there. You guys know the drill, I do what I do. Um, but check them out if you guys are in the Portland area, if you're in the Oregon area, uh, you've just recently told me that you have had, you've got clients driving from Washington to come down, from or all the parts of Oregon to come yep. over just to see you guys. Yep. Because it makes sense. They take good, good care of their customers. You guys took good care of me. Yeah. I Family. still paid, but I, they took good care of me. Um, all right, guys, we will see you guys soon. I don't know, I don't know if I'm in frame right now, but right now I was not gonna put this in the vlog, but I felt it necessary to put it in. So where I got my oil change done, uh, it's, a, you know, a mechanic shop, AG Automotive. They've been really good and they diagnosed this girl's issue with her van, right? Finally! <laughs> <laughs> and we, I, she was just playing a beautiful song, but I hit the pause button because she said something that kind of it resonates if you if you've ever been in this situation before. You're not gonna say it again. I said I can't I can't wrap my head around the fact that my van is gonna start every time I try to start it. Because for the past two months I never knew if it was gonna start when I put the key in the ignition. And I'm not gonna have to get jumped anymore. AAA is finally gonna not have to hear my voice. Can you tell the camera, the audience, what 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 happened with your van and why you ended up going to the mechanic in the first place? Well, basically, my alternator and battery light kept coming on, but no one could figure out what the problem was and if it was an electrical thing or what, because I got the battery tested and it was like 100% health this is an original point and the alternator was reading in a 13.7 so it was also fine so basically people said just 
keep driving. She just needs a break every now and again. Finally, I had to get jumped like two or three times in one day. So I called AAA, they replaced my battery. We thought that was gonna be fixed. And then the next day, um, my light came back on and I had to get jumped again. So that time we ordered an alternator. We installed the alternator and it still wasn't working. And so it ended up being a freaking ground wire that they had to order. And this whole process has taken a little over two weeks. So I haven't been able to drive my car or sleep in my home. I've been couch surfing. And it really kind of sucked, if I'm being completely honest. So I'm feeling pretty on top of the world that I could even sing you a song. This is not just a vlog about AG Automotive Works. This is a vlog about what really can happen in a van life situation. This is like, uh, I've told you guys this before that uh, I love doing things that are like real and van life, like what is the realness of it? We're not just on beaches and sunsets and nature and mountains and all that other good jazz. It can be situations like this that like uh, you know that you've been through hell and back. Yeah, basically whenever I'm on the only reason I'm on the vlog is because my life's a show. Yup. But for real, I anything that could go wrong has gone has, has gone wrong. I came to Oregon to hike and to explore. explore. I haven't done any of that. I haven't even had my van for two weeks. So You've been couch surfing. So on, honestly, now that my van's fixed, you probably see a lot less of me. Thank God. And I'm glad that uh, she can be the, the guinea pig or the test subject here to how van life can be not so great sometimes and you kind of have to just roll with the punches because this whole process these last two weeks, you know, she said it to me several times that it's not just our vehicles, it's also our homes. Okay, and that was that was the thing. When we dropped it off, I, I asked them if I was allowed to sleep at the shop when they told me that they had to order the part and at that specific shop. Some do allow it, but at that specific shop they wouldn't let me sleep there. So not only can you not transport yourself anywhere, but some people have to find Airbnbs. I had couches. That's the part that really sucks. I think I see something. I literally have butterflies, and I kind of feel like I'm going to be sick. Who's that? Is that Billy? Billy girl! I feel like she was in the hospital. She kind of was. She's a big part of your life there. She was really sick. Oh! Reunited. Back at AG Automotive. While well, somebody's doing a happy dance. Alright guys, we are back at AG Automotive. Or at least I am. 